Welcome to a read along with Dr. Powell in the book Discrete Perspectives in Mathematics. This is section 5.3. We're going to be talking a little bit about cryptography RSA style. Okay, so we're going to look at Z mod MZ cross, so the multiplication group when we mod out by a number M, and that's going to be our message set. Now we're going to pick M such that it's very hard, in fact, probabilistically impossible, pretty much, to pick an element that doesn't have that's it doesn't have an inverse. And so we'll be okay in here when we do that. So how are you going to do that? Well, to encrypt a message, simply what we're going to do is um, think of um, this as a Z mod NZ module. Okay, what does that mean? And um, how, how does that help us? Okay, so it's, if as we saw before, this right here is uh, via exponentiation. It has an outside multiplication by a group, Z mod NZ, where N is equal to the size of this multiplication group. Okay, the size of it. Because if you raise any group element in here to the power N, which is the which is how big this group is, we're always going to get to the identity of this group. So it's going to be like behaving like the zero exponent. And so really the exponents will live in here. So really we're, what we're, we're saying by saying this is a Z mod NZ module is simply saying it has an outside multiplication via exponentiation. And that exponentiation, um, those exponents live um, in mod N arithmetic n is the size of that multiplicative group. Okay, so we have that outside multiplication. So we need to pick an element in here that acts on it such that that element, that action has an inverse action. To have an inverse action, let's think about that for just a minute. Okay, to have an inverse action, let's think. So let's suppose that we have some element A of this guy Okay, in here, in that message group. And we raise it to um, an encryption exponent, all right? So this E lives in the additive group because exponents add, right? Z mod NZ, okay? So E lives in there. Now, what we'd like to do is we'd like to be able to then take this message and raise it to a decryption exponent, which would give us back a bar. That means that E times D itself needs to be congruent to one, but where do they live? Where does the exponents live? They live mod N. So congruent to one mod N. So if we knew what N was and we knew what E was, we could figure out what D was by just finding the inverse of E in mod N arithmetic. Now, usually n is what we want to keep hidden. The public might know the number m. They might even know e. But what they don't know is they don't know n, the size of this multiplicative group. To know the size of this multiplicative group is equivalent to knowing how m factors. So all we have to do is choose a number that is extremely hard to factor, uh, so hard that it would be... Um, it take years to factor using uh, using a really good algorithm algorithms um, so that uh, n is secure so that no one can actually figure out how to decrypt and that's the idea okay so as we read through this section that's um what we what we use all right so let's take a look at this for a minute In some of this, we talk about the size of the multiplicative group, how to figure out what the size is. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about that for a minute. 
we know that um, 77 is equal to 7 times 11. And via the Chinese remainder theorem that we had um, in the last section, Z mod 77Z as an additive group is this isomorphic to Z mod 7Z cross Z mod 11Z. So kind of like when we have a congruence over here, we get a solution over here. And um, so pairs here give a unique solution in this. And that's the idea that this was an isomorphism. Okay, so using the fact that this is a, <clears throat> that we have an isomorphism here, we actually um, get an isomorphism um, with multiplicative groups too, because the multiplicative group of this is obtained simply by taking the, um, oh, so of the whole thing is like taking everything that has an inverse here, everything, um, comma, everything that has an inverse here. So our tuples, we just make sure in both entries, both of these guys are in, are in respective multiplicative groups since multiplication is done component wise. So, um, so well, that idea tells us that we just take everything that has an inverse here and everything has an inverse here, and that should be directly related to everything that has an inverse overall in the overall group, which we knew isomorphically was this. So um, this gives us a way to compute the size of the multiplicative group. Basically what we do is we factor it into prime parts, and then we find the size of the multiplicative group with seven, the size of the multiplicative group with 11. Now, this is a prime. Seven is a prime. So how many things um, don't have inverses? Just zero bar. And then we're left with then one bar, two bar, three bar, four bar, five bar, and six bar all have inverses because they don't share any common factors with seven. So um, so the number of, of these guys that don't have, that have inverses is actually six. So um, the size of this multiplicative group is six. We just go one less than the prime. Similarly, this is a prime 11. So we go one less than the prime 10. So we just take six times 10, which is 60. So the size of this multiplicative group is six times 10, which is 60. Okay. So using that idea, we can um, keep going here. All right, so we know it's 60. All right, now let's suppose that, um, that we have a key or an exponent key um, for encryption. Suppose that we want to um, encrypt by raising something to the 13th power, but remember the exponent 13 lives mod 60. So to find the de decryption exponent, you simply take the inverse of 13 in mod 60 arithmetic. Um, here's an example of using the um, Euclidean algorithm and working and working through that. Um, you can see that um, uh, 37 bar. Notice how we wrote we wrote negative 23 bar as 37 bar. Um, that's so that we when we take an exponent, we can think of quite literally just raising to powers like to the 37th power even. Okay, so we can think 37 is the decryption exponent. So if we first raise by a power of 13, then to decrypt, we raise by a power of 37, and then we should get um, the original message. Okay, so let's suppose we take an original message of 19. We encrypt it by raising it to the 13th power. Then, um, now how do we raise something to the 13th power quickly? Um, well, actually by continuing to reduce your, um, to reduce mod um, 77 um, repeatedly, it actually becomes a quick calculation. In fact, we can base almost do this in our head or even just write it out quickly. We could take 19 squared and either we can work that out or I have this written out. You can just think of this as 20 minus one 
quantity squared and use like 20 squared minus two times 20 plus one. Okay. Um, and get 361. Okay. And so then we can get, and then we rewrite this in terms of 77 quickly right here um, by even doing some kind of fact factoring and rearranging. And then we get 53 mod 77. Okay. Now what do we do? Now 53 is 19 squared. So we square 53, which is negative 24. So we square that to get 19 to the fourth, following the same basic type of procedure. Um, now notice, okay, so uh, now this is interesting right here. Um, uh, as we're going through right here, notice this is like, I'm taking away seven times three and I'm adding seven times three as I go along right here. Um, as I, as I head through this. So I think of this quite literally as seven times, seven times 80, and then you're adding 16. And then I just pop in a minus and a plus, but I do it in such a way that I have a 77 here. So I have a, so I can quickly reduce the mod. Now there's many mental tricks that you can do to, in order to do something like that, but nonetheless, or you can just work it out. But not, but you get 19 to the fourth, and then you reduce it, uh, mod 77, you get something. Then you take negative 40, and you square that, because that'll be 19 to the eighth, you get something, and you reduce it. Then you take that redu reduction, let's see, you have 19 to the eighth, which is 60, and then we're going to take negative 40, which is to the fourth power, because four, time, four plus eight is 12, so we're going to use two results that we have already negative 40 and we take 60 multiply those together get this um again this is a little trick to quickly get what it is mod 77 but you can do any number of things if you like here notice how we have um okay but anyhow we get negative 13 all right as being 19 to the 12th power so 19 to the 13th power is simply negative 13 times 19 and we end up getting negative 247 and reduce that to 61 mod 77. Whew. Okay, so notice that all the numbers we dealt with were fairly small, but we could still do it. And a, a computer could do this re relatively quickly by just continuing to reduce. So the calculation doesn't become too complex or, or challenging. Now, um, if we raise it to the 13th power, we'd have this monstrosity to deal with, but we don't really need to because we're always reducing in a mod. So reducing in a mod at each step really um, helps us a lot with exponentiation. Okay, so we end up getting 61, which is the same thing as negative 16. So that's our encryption. So let's go back. We started with 19 as our original message. We encrypted it by raising it to the 13th power mod um, where the message is live mod 77. The exponents live mod 60, but we're not really using that right now because we're just looking at what the, the output of the powers are, which is in the message group, which is mod 77. Okay, so we end up getting um, the encrypt encrypted message. So 19 was the original message and it encrypted to negative 16, which is 61 mod 77, because it's 16 less than 77. Okay, now, we take negative 16 and raise it to the 37th power. Why? Because 37 is the inverse of 13. Okay, so 37 is the inverse of 13. Now, um, how to do that? We take negative 16, you know, we can square it and reduce. We get 25. Take 25 squared, reduce, nine. Um, to nine, nine to the fourth, and we reduce um, to to sixteen, and um, okay. And so far, what we have is negative sixteen to the sixteenth power. Okay, and so um, all right. So that we know, negative sixteen, sixteenth power is congruent to 16 mod 77. Hmm. What does that mean? 
you raise negative 16 to the 16th power, you get 16. That's the same thing as saying six because this is even, so the negative goes away. That's the same thing as saying 16 to the 16th power 16. Now, if you divide both sides by 16, which you can, mod 77, since we don't share any common factors with uh, 7 or 11 there, um, we'd actually get this, 16 to the 15th is 1. So we can use that. Um, so negative 16 to the 15th power is negative 1. Um, this is an odd exponent. All right, so we can get the 30th power easily just by squaring that, so we get 1. So to get the 37th power, um, <clears throat> we know since the 30th power is 1, this just reduces to, to the 7th power, which is congruent to this to the 4th, 2nd, and then we already computed these above, 4th, 2nd, and that. And so we just apply those. Remember, in our calculation, we were computing the 4th and the 2nd. Okay. So we end up getting um, that and multiplied it out. We get this and we reduce and we end up getting 19 and that we were successful. So remember, we started with the message 19 and then what did we do? We encrypted it by raising it to the 13th power. And then we, we got negative 16 as our encryption. Then we raised it to the 37th power, which was our decryption exponent. And it brought us back to 19 as desired. Okay, and that's pretty much the way RSA type of cryptography works. Um, you just have to make sure that whatever that uh, you pick your your uh, message set your m value right here, um, so such that it's hard to figure out what n is. It's hard to factor. And there's all kinds of protocols for that, which you can look up online to see kind of how that is done. But this is really the nuts and bolts. Okay, so generally, you take two primes, P and Q, preferably large, multiply them, and that's your message set. And that's what the public knows. They know that number M. You choose an, an encryption key, and the public knows E, but it doesn't know D, which is the de decryption exponent. Um, so what you do is you compute the inverse of E mod a multiplicative inverse of E mod N. No one knows N because in order to know N, they would have to know how to factor M. So, but you know it, so you can, um, so you can find D and then you can use D to um, to decrypt it. Um, so these exponents, E times D, multiply together at mod N to be one. So you end up getting the original message. Now let's talk about how to compute the size of Z mod MZ cross. So this multiplicative group. Okay. So um, actually the computation of its size is... Um, given by a function called the Euler phi function. Phi of m is the size, all right? So we're gonna be talking about the output of this function and how to think about that. Okay, so let's run through an example. Suppose we want to find the Euler phi function of 40, meaning we're trying to compute the size of this group when m is 40. We know 40 factors, into its prime parts, two cubed times five, or eight times five. Okay, and those are relatively prime. By the Chinese remainder theorem, you can split this up then. So the size of this is the size of this multiplicative group times the size of that multiplicative group, or phi of eight times phi of five. Okay, so now we just have to compute these. Five is prime. So we know that it's just going to be one less than five, so four. So phi of five is four. Now what about phi of eight? We think about how many integers from one up to eight don't share a common factor with eight. That's equivalent to saying how many integers from one up to eight um, are not multiples of two because eight is a power of a prime, two cubed. So, um, well, 
half, half of the numbers, right? Half the numbers from one to eight um, are not, uh, don't share, are not a multiple of two. Half are a multiple of two, half are, half are not. So you take the numbers, so eight, and you subtract off half of eight to get four. So phi of eight is four, and phi of five is also four. Multiply those together, we end up getting phi of 40, which is 16. Let's look at another one. What about phi of 81? We're going to count all the numbers from 1 to 81 and omit those that share a common factor with 81. But again, 81 is a power of a prime, 3 to the fourth. So this is equivalent to taking away everything that's a multiple of that prime. So um, you're taking out one third of the numbers. Since um, uh, this is the number 3, and every third number is a multiple. So you just take out a third of 81. So 81 minus a third of 81. Um, 81 minus 27, so it's 54. Let's look at another example. About the only phi function of 625 times 81. Um, realize that 625 right here is 5 to the fourth. 81 is 3 to the fourth. So let's think about this. And these are relatively prime to each other. So via the Chinese remainder theorem splitting, you can do this. Phi of 625 times phi of 81. We already know that phi of 81 is 54 from the last example. So then let's compute phi of 625. Now we're going to be taking from 625 numbers, we're going to take away everything that's a multiple of five. That's one fifth of the num numbers. So basically we say 625 minus a fifth of 625. So 625 minus 125, which is 500. So we end up getting um, uh, that we get 500 times 54 is phi of this product, which is uh, 27,000. So that would be the size of that multiplicative group. Now, in general, you could say that phi of p to the r is simply just p to the r minus p to the r divided by p, because you're taking one p of the numbers, which you could rewrite like this, or you could even factor that out multiply it by p minus one. There's a lot of different ways of thinking about it, but the intuitive idea is pretty simple. You just take all the numbers and subtract off one p of those numbers, if p is the prime. Okay, and that concludes um, this little section. Thanks for watching.